Good evening. Welcome to our evening service. Facebook friend, welcome. Grab your hymn book in front of you and turn to page 406. Who's in the Lord's side? Who is in the Lord's side? I know I'm in the Lord's side. And we're, the message about Joshua, we're going to continue tonight. Joshua, uh, we know where Joshua stood. We know that Joshua was in the Lord's side. He made it clear with no hesitation. That's why Joshua is a, is a good name to call your kids like a child. Joshua, what a good name to give them because Joshua was a great man of faith, a courageous man, a spiritual man, a great spiritual leader of the home. And Joshua was in the Lord's side. So who's, let's stand together, page 406. Who is on the Lord's side? Who will serve the king? Page 406. Four verses, but the general leads into the song. songbooks. Hymn number 14, great classic, Kneel at the Cross. 
Hymn number 14, Kneel at the Cross. to mention this morning about the cleaners. I want to thank the cleaners for keeping the Lord's house clean. Thank Brother Jerry for cutting the grass. Pretty soon we stop cutting the grass. But let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this time that we set aside, Lord, for brothers and sisters in Christ to gather in your house. You're the head of the church. This is your church, the church of the living God. And you set up on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it, Lord. So you promise uh, that the church will go on as long as we do it your way, Lord, and the church could stand strong no matter the attacks of the devil. We know we have an enemy that is constantly attacking us, Lord, and he's gonna, we're going to continue to be under his attack as long as we live on this earth. But we know that greater is he in you than he that is in the world, and we are more than conquerors to him that love us, we know that we are in the winning side, Lord. We have you on our side. And um, <clears throat> I pray that, Lord, we need your presence. We invite you here. Without you, we can't do nothing. And we ask that uh, you bless your word. I know in the preaching, Lord, the most important part of the service, the preaching of your word. Encourage us, Lord. Step up our spiritual growth, our commitment, Lord. Faith come by hearing. And hearing the word of God, Lord, without faith is impossible to please you. Thank you for those who are here. Bless them and those who are watching through live streaming, Lord. Please give us something that only you could do. And may the Holy Spirit do the work that only the Holy Spirit could do. May this be a, a spirit control service for your honor and your glory and bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand if you're able, and let us turn to hymn number one, the very first hymn in our songbooks. Hymn number one, Jesus, I my cross have taken. Jesus, I my cross have taken. Hymn number one. Oh 
again in the book of Joshua in chapter 24 and looking at verses 14 and 15. Joshua chapter 24 verses 14 and 15. So there in the book of Joshua in chapter 24 and starting in verse 14, the word of the Lord reads, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. All right, we're going to continue the challenge this morning, the message. I have four points to give you, and I only gave you one point, so... Try to give you the four points tonight on this title. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this is Joshua's final message. His, he felt like his days were numbered. He was 110 years old. He was advanced in years. And he knew that his death was getting near. And there was something in his heart that he wanted to share with the people of God. And he gathered, we saw it in Joshua chapter 24, verse 1, that he gathered a big crowd of people. He gathered all the tribes of Israel. He gathered all the leaders to give them this challenge of serving God. So he gives them a powerful exhortation. It was a powerful challenge in certain this matter of serving God, and this is in um, uh, verse uh, 14 of Joshua chapter 24, 14 and 15, I read, Now therefore, fear the Lord. Two powerful exhortations. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of your father, serve on the other side of the flood in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it's an evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a powerful statement. What a powerful exhortation. What a powerful challenge. Powerful. And um, he, Joshua made it clear where he stood. He, um, he said, I guess in, in verse 15 there, choose you this day. Who are you going to serve? Make your own choice. You got to make the choice. You got to choose one side, but I already made my choice for my family. But after me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, Joshua said, my house is going to be where God is reverent, where God is feared, where God is elevated, where God is respected and God is exalted, and God is honored and praised and obeyed. So he mentioned there in verse 14, serving God with fear. So he says, I, my God, my, my house is going to be marked with the fear of God being present in my home. That means a healthy fear of respecting God. You know, you just don't want to hurt God. That's what the fear of God, what Joshua is talking about. And Joshua set that example. He set that pace and that pattern. Not only he says serving God with fear, but he's also talking about my house is going to be also, he said, in sincerity and in truth, which means, you know, it's going to be genuine. My, whole, my, my house is going to be genuine, real, and, and honest. So this statement is a strong de declaration. That was the point that I gave you this morning. It was a strong de declaration that Joshua is making here, and it was a public choice. Joshua let everybody knew where he stood. It was a lot of people. It was a big crowd. So it was a public choice that he made. Not only was it a public choice that he let everybody know where he stood, but it was a pronounced choice. Joshua made it very clear who he will serve. And, but also it was a proven choice because Joshua led by example. It was a great example. He led by example, so it was a proven choice, and it was also a personal choice. But it was a parental choice. There, verse 15 again, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua lived his faith in his family. Joshua made a strong declaration to his family, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord as long as you are under my roof. As long as you are under my care and my watch, we're going to serve the Lord and do the right thing under my roof. We're going to say the right things under my roof. We're going to watch the right things under my roof. We're going to listen to the right things under my roof. We're going to talk the right things under my roof. We're going to treat each other right in a way that honors the Lord under my roof. As long as I'm alive. Because that's my calling. That's, by the way, that is the calling of every man listening to my voice. You're the spiritual leader of the home. That's your calling. That's my calling. And so Joshua, we're not going to allow sinful behavior in our house. We're not watching sinful things in my house. We're not listening to sinful things in my house or even read sinful things as long as you are under my roof. And Joshua made it clear to his children, his family. In other words, son and daughter, the thing that you need to understand is that God's word make it very clear that the things that we take in the things that we watch, the things that we listen to, the things that we read, the things we are supposed to is going to affect our lives. It's going to affect your life. That's what we got to tell our children. It's going to affect, and I gave you Lamentation 351 this morning, 
It's a great verse. My eye affected my heart. Got to be careful what you watch, Christian. You got to be careful what your, what, what your eyes are watching. Because it will affect your life. It will affect your heart. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, as he thinking in his heart, so is he. You are what you think. You are the product of what you think. Whatever you are, whatever feel, whatever you are in your mind, that's where you're going to live. That's, what's, that's going to affect your life. That's going to affect your conduct. Garbage comes in and garbage go out. Phil comes in and Phil goes out. So if we are allowing things into our life that are sinful, not pleasing to the Lord, it's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt us. That's one of the things that we as parents need to learn to do. It's not just to tell our kids what they should do and what they shouldn't do, but we need to tell them why. We need to tell them, give them a Bible reason why we don't allow this. Why we don't allow this kind of behavior and why we got house rules and we protect our environment. This is a Christian home. Why we watch, why we listen to, how we talk, because it affects our life. It'll hurt our relationship with Christ. So we need to tell them. We need to tell them what the Bible says about these things. We need to share with them God's heart. So Christianity doesn't become for our kids just a a list of do's and don'ts, but tell them the reason that we have this house rules. Sin will destroy you. And let me just tell you, and of course I'll be talking to Brother Jared and, and Sunira because they got the baby and, you know, they, they, they are parents, brand new parents, and that boy's going to grow up fast. Your kids might not like when you start taking that kind of stand as they get older. They might not like when you start taking that kind of stand. Your kids might not like you if you take a strong spiritual stand as the leader of the home. Sometimes that, I think that's our biggest problem as parents. One of the biggest problems as parents is we are so concerned about our kids liking us. And we want our kids to be happy. With us. And sometimes what ends up happening is that parents start walking in the fear of man instead of the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says that the fear of man bring a snare, but whoso puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. That's Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. And, and some parents are so interested in their kids liking them, and they start walking in the fear of man and the man and the human beings that the parents are in fear is their own children. Their own children. And instead, instead of walking in the fear of the Lord, they are walking in the fear of causing displeasure to their kids. You don't want to hurt the feelings. Because you're, you're, you're taking a strong stand about being the spiritual leader that God called you to be. Listen, the goal of parenting is not to get our kids to like us, to be happy with us. I mean, it's a great thing if they do. We want that. The goal of parenting is to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's in Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 4, is to teach them to fear God. And Brother Jerry, you got that tremendous advantage that little boy, you know, he, he, he's going to copy daddy. He's going to grow up, and he's going to be a, a, like a sponge. And this is the best time to train them in the Lord, amen? When they're old and they're growing up and the worldliness and the calamity is growing in them, that's difficult. I'm not saying that there's no hope. You keep praying for them. You keep praying that they come back to the Lord, amen? But now, while they're little, this is the best time. Teach them, amen, to fear God, to love God, to reverend God, to obey God. To please God, to live for God, to serve the Lord, teach them to submit to God's word, to live by God's word, to, to, to uh, 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 fear God, to, uh, don't, to, to make decisions by God's word, to be governed by God's word, to never make a decision that's going to cause you to disobey the Bible. In my house, we make decisions according to the book. 
We obey the Lord. We put the Lord first. We fear God. We don't want to hurt God. We don't want to displease God. And that's, that's the goal of parenting. That is the goal. Amen? Listen careful, parents. Your children are like cassette recorders. They're always running and they're always recording. It's been recorded in their minds and hearts. The question is, what do you want to be recorded in their tape? What do you want to be recorded in that child's mind? What do you want to be the impression that is in their mind? Do you want them to be inundated by the satanic philosophy of this world that is promoted through TV, is promoted through, through the movies, is promoted through uh, music, even so, social media? I mean, think about it. Is that why you want to be recorded for a lasting impression in the minds of your children? Or do you want things to be recorded in their minds and heart that are spiritual edifying? Things that are, that are that is going to build them up in the ways of God. That should be our goal, amen? Things that are going to build them up in their, in their ways of God. If you want things to be built up in your kids so they could be built up in the Lord in their faith, then listen, then you have to say what Joshua said. You have to make a strong declaration and say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's where it starts. You have to make that strong stand declaration like Joshua. It's not open for debate, like I told you this morning. It's not open for discussion. It's not open for a vote. I already made my decision, and I made the decision for my family, for my wife, because I love her, and for my kid, because I love you. Because I want you to turn out right. I'm going to fight for you. Amen. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to monitor everything you do. I'm going to fight for you. So you could turn out right because I know that this sinful world is after you. And there's an enemy out there who wants to bring you down and bring the whole family down and bring our marriage down. Amen. And that's why we need... Spiritual leaders and spiritual women of God that, have that, that will make that strong declaration like Joshua. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going to monitor what you listen to. I'm going to monitor what you watch, what you read. Because I love you so much. And when you take a stand and say that to your kids... You're going to have to tell them, look, this is non-negotiable. This is non-negotiable things, which means, uh, it, 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 look, Sunday morning, we go to church. Sunday night, and I'm talking about Sunday school. We show up for Sunday school Sunday morning, and then we go for the 11 o'clock preaching service, and then we come back Sunday night, and then we come back Wednesday night, and then when they have extra services in the week, we're there. Amen. That's not, that's not non-negotiable things. That's part of the statement. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And by the way, I did that with my kids when they were little. Now they're grown up. Now we're empty nests. Now I got to say to myself, you keep serving the Lord. So look, that's what we need to tell our kids. Teach your kids to pursue things that are going to build them up in their faith in God, in their walk with God, in their relationship with God. And that's the advice that you want to give your kids. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Joshua here, he was making a strong declaration. Joshua led by example. Look, maybe tonight we got single mothers here. You say, how does this relate to me? I don't have a Joshua in my home. I don't have a spiritual man in my home. Or maybe you're a wife that has a husband who's not safe, who's not walking with the Lord, and the last thing he wants to be is a spiritual leader of the home. Maybe you kind of like got to drag him to come to church. You got to drag him to come to church to come Sunday morning and Sunday night, and you're like, look, we got to stay faithful. And he's just not that spiritual leader that he needs to be in the home. 
If, that's, if, if that, that is your situation here, some of the ones that I mentioned, guess what? You could still take that strong declaration as a single mom, and there's no Joshua in the home. You be the Joshua at the home. And you say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And if you live by yourself, you say that to yourself. Amen? That's, that's the stand we got to take. You need to keep serving the Lord and take the lead spiritually. So first of all, it's a declaration. It's a strong declaration. Number two is an expectation. It's an expectation. Because in Joshua chapter 24, in verse 15, he says, But as for me, in my house, watch this, we will serve the Lord. That's an expectation there. We will serve the Lord. That's an expectation. You know, I think of Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 1. It gives the definition of faith, right? And it says, now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is an expectation. Hebrews eleven six. 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So there, there is an aspect of faith in this. There is an expectation of faith in this. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, I'm believing in the promises of God that without faith is impossible to please him. We're going to live by faith, not by sight. We're going to trust God's promises in my house. Amen. amen. You got to expect that, amen? We're going to live by God's promises, by faith, not by sight, not by feeling. So I'm believing in the promises of God that Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 tell us, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You got to believe that and stand in the promise and, 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 and lead your family with the promises of God. It's, it's not only a, a strong declaration, it's, it's an expectation that, that we're going to stand on God's promises. We're going to live by faith. Amen. God is at work. God wants to do a work in your life, son and daughter, wife. He's not done with you yet. He's not done with me yet as long as you got breath in your body. And you got a, you got a, a clear mind and, 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 and your mind is still focused. So I'm believing the promises of God. In Proverbs chapter 22, in verse 6, train up your child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You got to believe the promises of God. You got expectation, amen? You have to believe the promises of God. So we believe in the promises of God. I'm trusting you, God, as I set the example in my house to serve the Lord, that you will use my godly example to touch my family's life. That's the expectation, amen? That God, I'm living by faith. I'm not living by sight. I'm, not living by, I'm standing in your promises and I take you at your word and I'm, 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 I'm obedient to what you call me to do, to be the spiritual leader of the home. Lord, I'm, I'm going to make every day a strong declaration. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm a, I'm, it, it's an expectation that you're going to use my godly example as I set the pattern, as I set the pay to touch my family's life. He'll do that. Don't lose faith in that. Amen? I mean, I think in Acts chapter 16, in verse 30, you know the story about the Philippine jailer, right? Remember the, the, the earthquake that shook the prisons, the foundations? Remember that the Philippine jailer told that every prisoner was going to escape? And he said, I'm done. I'm responsible for the escape. I, I'm done. I'm, I might just take my own life right now. I'm going to lose my life anyhow. And what did Paul say? And Silas, don't, you, don't do yourself no harm. We're all here. Nobody escaped. We're all here. He was trembling, right? Remember that? He, tre he was trembling. And what did he say? What, what did he say? The most inque important question to ask a, a sinner. What must I, sirs? What must I do to be saved, right? And then the apostles reply. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And watch this, and what? 
thy house and thy house. Amen? The principle here is this. Look, Philippine jailer, you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you start walking in the Lord, you start walking with the Lord, you start honoring the Lord, and you, and you start living for the Lord, and it's going to affect your family. It's going to affect your family. Amen? You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you set the example, and your family will be affected. I mean, remember Noah during the flood? I believe Noah had the same attitude as Joshua. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord because he feared God. He was the only one that was serving God. The whole world was wicked and, and turned their back on God. That's why God sent the flood, right? Because he saw that the whole world rejected God. They didn't want the ways of God. They were living in darkness. They wanted their wickedness and the imagination of their heart. And they wanted violence and, and, and corrupt the earth. But there was, there was Noah who walked with God and his family. And remember when God sent the flood, who went in the ark? His family followed him. What an influence he had in his family. His family, we, 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 I know we, we said about, about Noah, I said, you know, Noah was faithful and, and uh, for all his life, 120 years, preaching and preaching, and nobody listened to him. Nobody took him serious except his family. I'll take that over anything. Amen? If I, if I could win my family to Christ, hey, praise the Lord. What, what, what good is it if you lead others to Christ and you, you can't even your own family to Christ? Where well, they're condemned. Amen? Joshua, I mean, Noah had the same, he made that same strong declaration. Like Joshua, Noah, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We see the evidence in his family, how they turn out. I think of um, Abraham. Abraham was another one who I believe made also that strong declaration like Joshua, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How I know that? I, I'm, I'm, let me read to you Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Genesis chapter 18, because Abraham is a good, a good example of a spiritual leader of the home, just like Joshua. And this is in Genesis chapter 19, 18, in verse 19. You know this verse. It's a very familiar verse. In Genesis chapter 18, this is what God said about Abraham. God was very pleased with his servant, Abraham. He was faithful. He lived for the Lord. He feared God. He put God first. And in Genesis chapter 18, look what he says. Behold, no, I'm in 19, sorry. For I know him, look what God says, for I know him. That he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the weight of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken on him. So here we see here, you know, hey, it will affect your family. You just got to take the lead. Lead by example. Take the initiative. Amen? And say, hey, it's going to start with me. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It will affect your family. Amen? And have the expectation that God's going to use your godly example to touch others and touch especially your family. It, 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 Noah's walk with God touch his family. Abraham walk with God touch his family. Joshua's walk with God touch his family. Same God, amen. I was telling that to the visitor. Thank God for the visitor that came back the second time. Uh, Roberto, you know, Roberto. Keep Roberto in prayer. He lives right in Caseby. He visited us a couple of times. He was looking for a Baptist church, and he found here, and he. He was here this morning, and he said, I'm going to come back. And I asked him the question. I want to know where he stands spiritually. And I asked him, how do you know for sure? Are you saved? What does a person have to do to be saved? And he said, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you should be saved. you got to put your faith in Jesus Christ the Lord. It's not by works. And I like what he said. He said, and it's eternal too. You can't lose it. Pretty clear testimony, right, Reuben? 
Edgar? Clear testimony. Amen? And then he says, pray for me because I want my wife safe. I want my three sons safe. My wife is a strong Catholic, and the Catholic Church doesn't have the truth. There's no gospel there. And I said, what's her name? So I could pray for her. He said, her name is Delilah. Delilah? Like, like um, Samson's, that, that lady, that bad lady? <laughs> she said, yeah, that's, pray for Delilah. She's a Philistine. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll pray for Delilah. I've been praying for Delilah. She'll come to Christ, Amen. And the three kids, and he says he, he's been working on her. He said, he said I'm, not, I'm, not, you know, I'm not being a dictator because I love my wife. We've been married for so many years, but I really want her safe. I want her to come to the truth. I want her to live that false religion. And I told him, you know what I said? Live it. Live it before her. Live Christ before her. Live the scriptures. She could be affected. Your kids could be affected. All it takes is one to set the pace. Amen? And I hope he does that. I really do hope that he does that. But we see here that it was first a strong declaration that Joshua made. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It was an expectation. He was expecting by faith, God, I'm going to do what, I'm, what you call me to do. I'm going to be the spiritual leader of the home. I made up the mind. I'm sold out to it, Lord. And I'm expecting you to bless my family and to affect my family and touch my family. Amen? You got, you got to have the expectation. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? But also, number three is a realization. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a, not only a declaration, not only an expectation, but it's a realization Joshua realized that it starts with us. It starts with me. I'm to lead the way. I'm to set the stage. I'm to set the course for what my kids need to be. And then you know what? They will follow my example. But I got to set the course. I got to set the pace. They will follow my lead. You know that little children... They like to copy. They like to imitate. I'm telling you, my kids, I can tell you a story. Anthony, I, I, you know how I feel about gospel track. I always not leave the house without a gospel track. I always put the gospel track in the pocket. You know who I got that from? Pastor Garrick. I got it from him. He impacted me. And I always carry gospel tracks with me. You don't carry them, how are you going to give them out? can't preach. I understand. You know, we got time for soul winning, but look, when you meet somebody during the gas station, give them a gospel track. Right. Amen? Amen? Don't lose the opportunity. Amen. Give them a gospel track, ladies. Be like my mother, my, my mother-in-law who goes to shop right shopping and taking three or three hours because she's preaching the gospel to everybody. And she makes people mad too. She had an atheist young woman the other day. My, 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 you know, I mean, she's very sweet. And she tried to talk to her about, you know, I, they show you how to be sure when you die, you go to heaven. And she says, I don't believe that. I'm a atheist. She said, that is an awful thing for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that. Amen. Do that. Amen. That's what we need to do. Because, well, I, I say that because I, I put the gospel tracks in my pocket and Anthony, my little son, Anthony, who's, what, three, four years old, guess what? He wanted to put a gospel track in his pocket, too. He wanted to be like daddy. He wanted to stand, they want to stand like daddy, walk like daddy, and then they, but Jerry, they see you shaving. They want, to, they, want, they want to start practicing, you know, give me a toy or, or, or the shaving tool. I want to shave like that. Same thing with the lady, with the mom. They do that, right? They just, they want to be like that. They watch everything dad does and everything mom does. They imitate their parents. And by the way, we cannot say to our kids, do as I say, not as I do. That's not going to go well with your kids. They won't fall for that. 
They will not fall for that. That's what the world says, you know. They will not fall for that. Because how we act, how we talk, how we behave, how we treat others is going to have an effect on our family, on how they live. It will have an effect, an effect on them. Some of you, you got some of the stuff, from, you got it from your mom. Right? You act like your mom in some area. Some of you act like your dad. And one thing I learned about my dad, to be a hard worker. My dad was a hard worker. Even though my dad was a horrible father role, I hate to say that, pray for my dad's salvation, but he was a hard worker. And I caught that from him. He was a hard worker. So look, um, so if you, you, you uh, parents are watching bad things in secret, doing bad things in secret, the Bible makes it very clear that your sin will find you out. Your sin, we know what that means? Consequences of sin are going to find you. Because you cannot run from your sin consequences. And God will bring it to the light. That's why it's important that when you're alone, do the right thing. Think the right thing. Listen to the right thing. Behave properly. Amen? Because the eyes of the Lord are in every place in beholding the good and the evil. Amen? Because, you know, you want, you, hey, you, you, you want your kids to turn out right. And then you need to be the God, the right example, even when nobody's watching. So the realization of what I am is what my family is going to become. If you want your children to be a lover of the word of God, if you want your children to be worshipers of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I, I want to ask you a question. Are you a lover of God's word? That's where it starts. You got to realize that that's where it starts. The best thing you could do in your home and let your kids, your family watch you loving in God's word, reading God's word, spending time in God's word, and spending time in your knees in prayer, in your, in your devotion. What an impact would that have on your children? Amen? That's, a, that's why, look, if you want them to love God's word, you got to love God's word. If you want them to be a worshiper of Jesus, you have to be a worshiper of Jesus. So they will follow your lead. They will become what you are. They become what you are, not what you want. It's what you are. Let me read to you 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 12, chapter 4, in verse 12, you got to realize that it's a realization, this thing about, but as for me and my house, the Lord, that means you got to realize that you, it starts with you. It starts with me. Somebody got to take the lead. Somebody got to lead. And it says here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation. That word conversation is talking about behavior, conduct, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So, realization, we got to realize that it starts with your example and my example. So it's a strong recreation. It's, it's a wonderful expectation. I'm expecting God to bless my example, to touch others. That means we got to set the pattern now. We got to set the right examples now. But it's also, so it's a, it's a sobering realization. That's number three. And number four, last, number four, last, is an awesome celebration. It's an awesome celebration. You know why I say that? Because Joshua is a picture of Jesus. You know, Joshua is a picture of Jesus. And as Moses, who represented the law, could not bring the people of God into the land of promise, which the land of promise represents the spiritual life. So Moses and the law could not do that. 
But Joshua, who represents Jesus, is the one who brought the people of God into the land of promise. Moses could not do it, but Joshua did it, and he represents Jesus. Jesus is the one that could help us with the spirit-filled life. Amen? The dedicated life. The uh, surrender all life to, to the Lord. Serving God, full dedication, with sincerity and truth. So Joshua is a great picture of Jesus. Our Joshua, Jesus says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And by the way, Jesus served his father perfectly. He's a good example. Amen? He's our Joshua. He served his heavenly father perfectly. Jesus was consuming. He, he, the way he worshiped his father, it was, it was perfectly. What an example for us. Remember when Jesus was young? What he was focused on, what he was consumed about, my father's business. I'm about doing my father's business. He's our Joshua. Here's the point. Everything I need to serve God is found in my Joshua, Jesus. Everything you need to serve God, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And everything you need to serve God in a way that is pleasing to the Lord wholeheartedly with full dedication. Everything you need is found in Jesus. He's our Joshua. He's our Joshua. So everything I need to serve God, to walk, to walk with God, to, ha to have a life that honors God is found in my Joshua, Jesus. As I draw near to him, as I submit to him, as I obey him, then he supplies me with what I need to serve God perfectly and wholeheartedly. Galatians chapter 2, my mother has this in her bumper in verse 20. Not I, but Christ living in me. You can't live the Christian life apart from Christ. You can't live the Christian life victoriously. You can't live the spirit-filled Christian life apart without Jesus' help. Amen? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. I think that's Romans 13, 14. That means put on the life of Christ. Everything we need. To serve God obediently is found in our Joshua, Jesus. We saw that Joshua, right? He gave his final message, right? He was in his final moments. He knew his days were numbered, and he's giving them the final message, exhortation about serving God wholeheartedly. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you know what? Jesus, Joshua is the type of Jesus again. And I think of Jesus, you know, beginning in John chapter 12, all the way to verse 18, is really Jesus giving his farewell, final message to his disciples. That's what you see. Beginning in John chapter 12, all the way to 18, and 18 with their wrestle. Is Jesus actually giving his final farewell message to his disciples? And in John chapter 15, let me, let me show you John chapter 15. He's getting near going to the cross. He knows his time is coming. Jesus knows that his final moments are coming. His mission is about to complete it, and he's, he's encouraging the disciples. He's giving them their final farewell message. And I'll read to you on John Chapter 15, in verse 13 and 14, where Jesus says, Great in love have no man than this, that a man may lay down his life for his friends. And then in verse 12, he said, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. In verse 14, you are my friends if you do whatsoever. 
I commanded you. So what is he telling them? You give yourself to each other. Jesus said, if you're going to serve me, serve each other. Look out for each other. And you know, that's like really giving ourselves to other people is against our nature because we're selfish. We like to serve ourselves. We want others to serve us. Isn't that true? We're selfish. That's, our, that's against our nature, right? We want people to serve us. Take care of us. We love ourselves, right? The Bible said we, we do love ourselves. But that's what Jesus tells his disciples, and that's why he tells us. We live for others. We put ourselves last, right? How do we get joy, right? Jesus first, the old others, and the why is you put yourself last. That's how you get joy, amen? That's, that's the message. That's, that was the final message, the, the farewell exhortation that Jesus is giving his disciples before he goes to the cross. I can, a little bit like Joshua. He's a type of Joshua. Joshua's a type of Jesus. Amen? And, and I know that's against our nature to serve one another, to love one another, because Jesus said that's how they're going to mark that you are my disciples indeed by the love that you have for one another. But God gave us in John chapter 14, that chapter, he gave us a helper. He's called the Holy Spirit. Yeah, in the flesh, we could get selfish. We get self-centered, become self-lover. But when you get in the spirit, then you start thinking about yourself and you focus on others. And we got the helper called the, conf- the Holy Spirit. Yield to the Holy Spirit, amen? Because it's only in the Holy Spirit that we could really serve God. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You could call it to do that obediently in the spirit. In the spirit. But then in John chapter 15, Jesus talked about fruit bearing. About bearing fruit. That whole chapter deal with fruit bearing. Don't forget. Three chapters in chapter 18, he's arrested. So this is like Jesus Farewell, final message to his disciples about worshiping God. What you have to do to worship God, love one another. And he says in John chapter 15, he says, if you abide in me, you're going to bear fruit. And then he says, you're going to bear much fruit that remains. And, when you're, and then he says, when you do bear fruit, and I'm paraphrasing, when you bear fruit, much fruit that remain, God the Father is glorified. You glorify God the Father. Amen? And you know what? That's what worship is all about, serving the Lord. We glorify him. We bear fruit for him. And you know, in John chapter 15, the way you do that, you abide in Christ. That word abide means you obey him, you submit to him. You obey his commandments, right? And you abide in my word. The word of God is mentioned there too. You submit to God's word. You submit and obey God's word, and you're going to bear fruit. You're going to love other people. You're going to walk in the spirit and yield to the Holy Spirit. And now, guess what? That's serving God. God is serving God. So that's... That's what we need to do. So I'm not just, it's not just a strong declaration where we need to let people know where we stand. Who are you going to serve? Not just a strong declaration, but it's, it's not just a wonderful expectation. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lord, I'm believing your promises, Lord. That you're going to bless my example to touch others. It's not just a sobering realization. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, Lord, I get the picture. It starts with me. I got to realize that I got to take the initiative. I got to start leading. That's a, a sobering realization. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But at last, it's an awesome celebration. Because everything we need to serve God is found in Jesus. And Joshua is a type of Jesus. Amen? Stand on our feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. 
Lord, we thank you for the challenge that we heard this morning and tonight. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lord, what a powerful word, powerful statement. No wonder you people use those powerful words of Joshua and they put them in keychains and you go to the Christian bookstore and you find them in everywhere, Lord. But it's not just to have it in your, a plaque in your house, hanging in your door, or in a, on a, in a keychain, or on a coffee mug. No, we have to live it, dear God. We got to put it to practice. And may you raise up spiritual leaders, dear God, that will have, make that strong declaration, like Joshua, Lord, without hesitation. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Please use that, Lord. Let that penetrate in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. The invitation is open. The piano is playing.